book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Sarah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez came the father, became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Amidabad, and Minadab became the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, whose name was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam, Rehoboam the father of Abijah, Abijah the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the father of Joram, Joram the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham, Jotham the father of Ahaz, Ahaz the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh, Manasseh the father of Amos, Amos the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Shetiel. Shetiel, the father of Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel, the father of Abiud. Abiud became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azur. Azur, the father of Zadok. Zadok the, became the father of Achim, Achim. Achim, the father of Eliud. Eliud, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Matan. Matan, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Thus, the total number of generations from Adam, from Abraham to David, is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to Christ, 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. It's so hard to pronounce all these names, right? <laughs> even in Spanish. Even in Spanish it's hard to. But, well, it has a purpose. It has a purpose. And the purpose is that Jesus is inserted in the history of salvation. In the, promised, in the promises made by God to Abraham, David, and all these generations that are pointing out to the coming of the Messiah. This is the, perf the purpose of the gene genealogy of Jesus Christ. Christ is inserted in the history of salvation, in a concrete history, the history of the people of Israel, the people of the promise. Uh, so that's the main, pur the main purpose of this genealo genealogy. Now, we see that this history was fulfilled despite the sins of these people. Because when you see David, for example, he sent, um, he wanted uh, Uriah to be killed because he fell in love with um, the wife of Uriah. I don't know, I don't remember the name of the, of the wife or, of Uriah, but you know, we see the, the presence of sin in this history of salvation. And despite that, God is able to fulfill what he promised. And, and, this, and this has to be a source of consolation because our history itself, there is sin. There are wrongs. There are mistakes. And despite that, God is able to make us holy. 
God is able to bring to fulfillment His promises in us. Of course, if we are in that disposition to let God work in us, if we let God's grace transform us, if we're in that permanent attitude of conversion, that's, that's the only way God can fulfill in us what, what, what was his plan for us. Uh, so despite the sins of men, God is able to do wonders, wonders. And, and the same example, David had committed a, 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 very, a very grave sin by killing Uriah. But after that, right after that, he showed repentance and conversion. And God, again, he's faithful, faithful to his promises. And as we apply this to our very lives, to our very history, we all know our sins, our past, our history. And we, we have also seen how God has uh, led us throughout our own history to our present moment. And we see the good things we have done, the bad things we have done, and how we have bettered ourselves with the grace of God by, the God, by, by God's grace. Well, the same thing can be applied in the church. In the history of the church, in 2,000 years of history of the church, we see sin. We see men being unfaithful to God, to Christ. But at the same time, we see a lot of holy people, a lot of holy people. And there are millions of holy people in heaven. We cannot have them all in the liturgical calendar of the church. Otherwise, we would have to celebrate maybe 10,000 saints in a day. I don't know, just to, just to give you an idea of how much holy people is in heaven. Of course, there might be, there is a lot of people in purgatory, and we don't know how much people there is in hell, but there is people in hell. We don't know who, but there is people in hell. Despite, despite the church's sins, we can see how God is bringing to fulfillment his plan of salvation for humanity. How can we see that? Because at our present time, despite the sins of the church, there is still holy people in, in, in the church. You can meet holy people in the church. Because God's grace is not, cannot be stopped by the sins of some members of the church. He's still, he's still at work within his church. And Jesus promised his church, I'll be with you until the end of time. I'll be with you. I will not abandon my flock. Despite the unfaithfulness of some of the members of my church, I'll be there for you. I will, I will sanctify you. I will make you holy. I will bring you to heaven. Of course, if we're willing to embrace God's plan in us, right? Because he respects our freedom. He respects our freedom. So, uh, uh, during this Advent season, we know we have made some mistakes, right? And we all are, and we're not uh, totally prepared to celebrate Christ's birth. But despite that, we still have a week. We still have a week. Despite that, we can still embrace God's graces. Those graces He wants to bestow upon you, especially in these times, in these times, in your time, in your history. So out of joy, let us uh, prepare for Christ's birth and let us Christ, let us let Christ prepare us uh, during this last week of Advent. Let us pray in silence.